Alright guys, I need a quick input. I have this aquarium here. I also have a cat right here who likes the aquarium. I have a lot of just normal fish that you see at the pet store. You know, just normal pet store fish. And I really put a lot of time and effort into this whenever it's the winter time and I'm not fishing like crazy. But with this time of year, my busy schedule, I don't get to put as much time and effort into my aquarium as I would like. But what I'm thinking is, and y'all tell me what you think about this. What if I got rid of all these fish, give them to somebody local who wants them, or you know, give them back to the pet, st uh, pet shop, and maybe get a couple small brim or something. It's a 30 gallon tank, which I know is not huge, but I think a, like two small brim would do all right in here. And I'm wondering if like these catfish I have to clean up the bottom, you know, with all this cover and everything, if they would get harassed too much by the brim. And I've, you know, I need to trim this up. I got a shrimp here that would probably definitely be a snack to a brim, but I got some fish in here that, you know, they're just kind of basic fish. And I've always wanted to put, you know, some game fish kind of in here um, from the beginning. I just never really did it. I didn't really. When I got this aquarium, I started off with a smaller one and I didn't really know how much I would enjoy it. So I'm thinking, what if I put a little brim in here? I know it's too big, or I know the tank is too small for even a small bass. I mean, maybe at the beginning, but he would outgrow it pretty quick. So tell me what y'all think. Should I or should I not get rid of these fish and put like two small brim in here? I wanna, I wanna see answers in the comments to that question. Because I've been wanting to do it, and now I'm really wanting to do it. Now I would clean up some of this foliage, some of this aquatic plants. And uh, maybe put a couple of brim in here. So y'all tell me what you want to see about that. What we're going to do today is I'm about to head to my parents' house and start getting the boat and the truck ready to head to Louisiana for the IFA in Homa. We're leaving Saturday to go back over there for the Redfish Tournament. And Homa is a spot... Is an area that we we did pretty good last year. Got second place and uh, had a really big bag and a bag that usually wouldn't be beat, but another guy had a giant sack. So um, we are pretty comfortable with fishing Homa, except they just got hit by that dang tropical storm, Category One hurricane Barry, and I'm not really sure how well and how normal everything's gonna be over there. I know that it kind of hit directly right in that area, so. You know, it wasn't a huge hurricane, but with their the way their land and their ecosystem is, it doesn't take a big one to really change up the marsh and to mess up a lot of stuff. And we're real familiar with hurricanes here and how devastating they can be, even though that was just a one. You know, it, it still can change a lot of things around in the environment, the ecosystem, and really, you know, make, change what you're used to seeing when you've been fishing somewhere for a few years and there hasn't been anything like that changes it. So... We're going to go do a boat tour today, and I might even film a video on some tackle. And then tomorrow, I might film a vlog getting ready, you know, getting everything finalized and before we head out to go to Louisiana. So, y'all hold tight, and yeah. Alright, so I'm back at the house editing the video, as y'all can see right here. And I didn't realize until I was editing it that around the boat, on the little boat pad back there where we keep it, there is crap everywhere piled up. Um, I know my mom is going to yell at me if she watched this video and I showed our big old pile of crap. But we used to have a really nice shed that all that stuff was in and then it blew away in the hurricane and now it's just kind of piled up there. Get another shed built very soon. So we're not hoarders and I know it looks bad and I don't know, I don't think y'all really care. But I should say this because my mom will fuss at me, possibly my dad too, if they know that I showed y'all a big old pile of junk on the side of the house so with that being said just a disclaimer um yeah so just ignore that part all right guys here at the house here right next to the boat i don't know if you can hear it or not but that condo way over there their fire alarm's going off because they're doing construction they're fixing stuff up after the hurricane so i don't know if y'all be able to hear that i can barely hear it but i think you might be able to barely hear it in the background of the video Hopefully you don't. It's not terribly annoying, but it's just kind of annoying. But here I am. This is my 20s, late year 2016 
Mayak 22 Extreme. And this is an absolute beast of a boat. I know a lot of y'all know about my boat. I know a lot of y'all are familiar with what I run. But if you're not, or if you're wanting to get a more in-depth look at my boat, my setup, we are about to do it right now. And we're going to start from the bow. I'll do the troll motor, then I'm going to get in the boat, do the inside, and then the outside. But this is a Minn Kota uh, Ultera troll motor. I got it on a battery tender plug. This is awesome because I often change out troll motors or I throw it in the back to run, you know, make long runs. So this is a really quick way, and these are really, really good plugs. They last a lot longer and they have a lot better connection than some of the other ones. But this is the automatic deploy. Uh, automatic trim control motor which is really nice when we're fishing off towers so you don't have to get up and down bring your control motor up bring your control, put your control motor down you know adjust the trim and everything and of course I have a TH Marine G-Force Eliminator prop nut which is a really simple and easy way to make your control motor perform a little bit better it makes it quieter less vibration in the water helps you know really help you be stealthy on the fish and this little porch right here actually cool the inside of your troll motor so it really is a quick easy way to make your troll motor a little bit better and it's not too expensive either so usually this one i've run it in the grass and the sand a lot and this it was bright red at one time but the abuse i put it through has eventually lost some of its color so we're going to hop in the boat and keep on moving all right so starting off on the bow you can tell this boat doesn't really have a giant front deck it easily can fish two people off of it but it has a whole lot of room inside inside the boat which is really nice for guiding you'd be surprised how many people just sit stand here and fish rather than get up on the front deck so you can really fish a lot of people in this boat but up at the very front you have anchor storage which i use mostly for like lines and a paddle and any other stuff i might just need to throw in the boat like a dry bag with rain gear in it uh, really anything that doesn't necessarily have to be dry it's fairly dry this compartment is um unless you're really you know you know, downpour or something, or washing your boat out, it needs to be cleaned, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and give you all a disclaimer, this boat is very dirty, it needs to be cleaned. You know, the top's not that dirty, but inside the compartments and stuff really keeps it clean. But it just drains right out the side right there. So it's not necessarily a dry bin or a dry storage, but it's a good place for an anchor or lines or, you know, paddles, an extra life jacket, anything like that that you're not necessarily super concerned about, you know, it getting wet. Moving back a little bit further, we have, the main tackle storage now this is really dirty i had another one of these guys actually pulled it off because this tackle box barely fits in here and it was my stuff was hitting the tackle box so i couldn't have the extra tackle web this is kind of a nice way to stick on here and be able to put in like sunscreen stuff like that stuff that you know you don't want to necessarily have just floating around on the bottom of your compartment or you don't want to dedicate a whole you know area in your dry storage for so and then right here i have my um, PH Marine Conserv Conservation G-Force Coal System. I'm not going to try and fish all that out. It's been a couple. I haven't used that in a while, so it's kind of all tangled up in there. But there's my coal system right there. And I got tackle boxes in here. And then I got my check it stick right here. And one thing you'll notice that's different about my boat that I don't know if anybody else has done yet. I think I was the first person to really do it on this boat for this particular reason. But I really liked but this this tackle storage will get a little bit of water in it if you're washing out the boat if you're i mean really in some serious rain usually all the water you know runs down this edge and out that drain but you know sometimes if you get a lot of water or a lot of rain you know most bay boats most serious tournament fishing boats don't really have any true dry storage and a lot of manufacturers that say they do are usually lying you know what i mean it's probably pretty dry but it's not totally dry, especially on like a bay boat. You got to get in those really big high-end bay boats that won't do what I can do in this boat to really get true dry storage. So I wouldn't, I don't like my tackle sitting in water. Um, sometimes you get a little bit of water pulled up that wouldn't quite drain out those little drain holes right there. So I got one inch sea deck cut and have a little edge on it. And what that does is any water in here runs to the edge and run out the hole. So I have not had any issues with my tackle sitting in water or really getting wet at all um, ever since I did that. Now the only downside is you do lose a little bit of height. Like I said, that, that tackle bag barely fits because now essentially your floor is just one inch higher. And the other good thing is it has padding on it, so it kind of helps you 
you know, protect your stuff. If you're really beating in some rough water, your stuff's not rattling around quite as bad because it's got padding. Got two stainless cleats right here to beware of the mess. I just cleaned out a lot of stuff on the boat that I don't need anymore. Um, got two stainless cleats on each side. I got these little stainless tie downs right here that I put eye bolts in to secure my tower when I'm sight fishing. Underneath the front deck, there is rod tubes on either side. That's how you secure the rod butt. That's how you secure the rod tube or the tip of the rock. Same thing on this side. And then we have our forward live well, which I only ever use this live well if I'm fishing the elite and I'm keeping five fish. You know, a normal two day tournament, or I mean a normal two fish tournament, I always just use the rear live well, but this is a nice little live well if you're going out, you know, and you want to just throw some drinks in there, a little bit of ice, or if you need to, you know, separate your bait for whatever reason, it's a really nice little forward live well that you can use to just have an extra live well or storage or, um, you know, to keep ice and drinks in and stuff like that if you want to, or a fish box. And then coming back to the console, I got these fold down seats that are super comfortable for making long runs. And here is my view of the office. So I have tilt steering right here with my blinker switch right here for my jack plate, which powers off, so it's not going to do anything. Got a pro air system switch. I got all my switches right here for all my live wells and everything. Got a power pulse switch right there, throttle obviously. Um, I have a Lowrance HDS 12 Live. The newest model on the HTS 12 and as you can see you can't really put a much bigger graph there I'm almost hitting my throttle and I'm almost off the side of the console so there's no going up from the 12 on this boat unless you put it on a bracket right here I got fish brand cup holders which are really nice you know they got a little padding in the bottom they got these little rubber things to keep your drink from flying around I got this little stupid tackle tray here because I'm bad about just throwing a lure there pulling one off um, you know really just throwing stuff around and of course Inshore HydroWave. This thing has really changed the way I fish in, in some uh, some circumstances. So I definitely recommend if you have a little bit of extra money to spend and you want to try and improve your game a little bit, definitely do not shy away from the HydroWave. It really does make a difference. So and then underneath the console, oh yeah, and these seats, they flip up and that little rail down there flips up. So you can stand and drive if you want. Or you can sit down if you're making a long run or something, or if you know, you're know you running across some shallow areas and you want to stand up and really get a good view, you can do that. Or you can sit down if you're making a long run in rough water, you know, you'd be more comfortable. Got rod holders on the side of the boat, gas cap. Um, just make sure you don't put gas in here. Um, I haven't done that, but I know somebody that has. Um, underneath the console, we have, I have a little Yeti hopper. And I use this really, I got this idea from the MLF, watching the MLF on TV. Uh, all the officials have a little Yeti hopper. They keep their scale in, keep a lot of stuff that just has to stay dry, but they need to get to quickly. And that's exactly what I use that for. It tucks in right under there very nicely because now I don't have three batteries under there anymore. Put my life jacket right there so I can grab them quickly. And as you can see, as you can see, I have two lithium battery power batteries in parallel so i have 36 volts but i have 120 amp hours of run time which is i fished a long long time and i have not run those down so that's really all you need to know about that um and since i don't have an extra battery anymore i'm not running three i have room for this to go right there so that is a really neat little way and i know there's cheaper dry bags and stuff like that but that one you know, it doubles as a cooler. If you ever need to take it out and use a small cooler, you can do that. And it just fits right there perfectly. It doesn't slide around, doesn't work its way out. It really works out perfect. And usually when I am fishing a tournament or guide or whatever, I will keep another like Yeti hopper right here. All right, back of the boat, we have the main live well. This is the live well I almost always use. I got it hard to come off because I don't want any water sloshing out when I'm running. Um, it is a... Pretty good size live well, easily keeps two or three redfish. I've had three big redfish in here, no problem. Um, like I said, it's pretty dirty, needs to be cleaned out. But it has a recirculator, and I have the TH Marine Pro Air System right here, you see on the side. So it's a really good live well for keeping redfish alive. I've, I haven't really had any problems keeping fish alive in there, knock on wood, unless like, you know, you tongue hook them or something and they're really bleeding bad and they're already not gonna do too well. 
But on the back deck, I know it's really dirty in here. I have my power pole pumps right here. I have a throwable right there underneath that. I have a Pelican case where I keep a lot of really important paperwork like my captain's license information and fishing licenses. It's like, you know, first aid, stuff like that that you don't really need to get to very often, but you know it's gonna stay dry in that Pelican case because you will get water in these back compartments. Um, it's just part of the way this boat's designed. You know, you don't have a splash well or anything. You get a lot of water if you just come to a quick stop you get a lot of water washing over the back deck. And right here I have a very dirty compartment, like I said, but I have a deep cycle, 100 amp hour, 12 volt battery that I run everything off of. I have it all connected with that awesome Hydro TH Marine connection. On off switch right there. I got a lot of wires that need to be cleaned up because I'm always adding stuff or fixing stuff, stuff like that. And then there's four rod holders in the back. It's a really good place to keep my net right here so it doesn't fly out or anything. I use one of those little gear ties to keep it in. Four rod holders. I keep a uh, leader right here with a little bungee to keep it from flying off. That's a really quick and easy way to get leader. And then of course on the back we have the Yamaha 250 Show. I've been super impressed with that engine. I've had, I'm coming up on 400 hours on it and knock on wood, no issues. Two black power pole blades. I have the Atlas hydraulic jack plate. That's the black version. That's the 12 inch heavy duty. As you can see right here. That's the 12 inch setback heavy duty. I have blue water LED afterburner lights off the back. They're red. That's pretty freaking cool to see. I run a four blade 26 and a half pitch prop when I'm running for speed. If I'm just daily driving, cruising around, I'll throw on a 24 or 25, get a little better hole shot and acceleration. Um, and then right underneath my jack plate, right here, you can see I have some grass hanging out. There's my transducer for my lower ants, which I hate putting holes in the boat, so I drill it to the bottom of my jack plate. And there's my speaker for my hydrowave. And you might be wondering, why in the world is it facing backwards? Well, sound and water travels equally in all directions. So you can have a speaker pointed toward the back of the boat, and you'll hear it just as good in the front of the boat than if you had it pointed the other way. It's omnidirectional. A little science lesson for you right there. Sitting on a coastline trailer, um, I have these lights put on by TH Marine that light up the trailer. They're white, so they're street legal, but I actually have a remote. I can switch them from any color in the entire rainbow. I have a dog that likes to ruin my uh, video. And I have another dog that's really old and slow. What's up, bud? But yeah, y'all know the wrap. Um, but yeah, coastline trailer. But these lights right here light up the wrap while I'm driving at night. Makes your trailer easier to see. Makes it safer on the highway. And like I said, I can switch the colors. So if I'm just like trying to show off, I can flip it to red. Turn on the red lights on the boat. Make everything all red. Um, or you can make it amber or white for traveling down the highway legally and safely. So, like I said, it doesn't really have all the storage that you could find in another 22-foot bay boat. But this boat is for somebody that is a diehard fisherman that wants to go really fast and wants to be able to float shallow and really fish a lot of places that other 22 foot bay boats can't go. Now you're going to lack on storage, you're going to lack a little bit on, you know, just comfort, seating, amenities and stuff like that. But this is for the diehard fisherman. This boat is not for, you know, taking the family out on the boat once every two months for a little cruise. I mean, you can, you can be the coolest looking guy at the island, but, you know, it may not be the most comfortable uh, family boat if you have a big family but as far as speed and performance I mean I've had this boat upwards of 75 miles an hour before um, if I have it you know light not you know a ton of gear and people and stuff like that if I'm running it light just me or somebody else that's pretty light I can run in the a low 70s pretty frequently um, and this boat is actually incredibly dry which is something that I wasn't really prepared for whenever I ordered it and got one because I just kind of expected you know you get a light boat that's fast and can do what this boat does you're gonna sacrifice, you know, a ride or, or you know, being dry. But this edge right here, well, you can see these lights right here. These are red. These light up if I flip on my accessory switch. This edge that goes all the way around the boat is like a really heavy-duty spray rail, and it takes a lot to get that water up and over and get you wet. You know, you gotta be coming, you know, at the right angle of the waves, and the wind's gotta be howling to get it to push back on you. So it's super dry, super fast. It's got a ton of room in it because you don't have all those, you know, compartments and all that stuff to really go wrong and that's the other thing about it it's that there's not a whole lot to go wrong on the boat which i really like because most stuff's really easy to fix yourself if you have something to go wrong um 
and all in all it's really a, a die hard fishing boat for the fishermen and somebody that wants to fish in a tournament and go fast and, and like I said I fish some of those little Tuesday night bass derbies and I'm faster than almost all of the bass boats out there except for maybe one or two depending on if they show up so you know it kind of is fun to blow bass boats out of the water in a 22 foot bay boat and then eat up the chop way better than they can when it's windy so this is my my 22 extreme um texas boat texas family owned it's a really really awesome boat and you know i'll be selling this one fairly soon and i'm going to order another one almost exactly like it just to keep them keep rotating them in and out and not sit on a boat too long but you know it is a really really killer boat that really it's not a whole lot it can't do i've had this boat 15 16 miles offshore whenever it's a pretty good day um I've had it 70 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour. I've had it in 13, 14 inches of water, comfortably fishing, looking for redfish. So there's not a whole lot this boat cannot do. And in case y'all are wondering, this is my boat. This is my tournament rig. This is my guide rig. And this is what I fish out of whenever y'all watch my videos fishing. And if y'all have any questions, if I, I mean, I may have left something out, but if y'all have any questions or anything, let me know and I'll feel free to answer for you or go back and cover it again in another video. Thank you all for watching, and bye.